Hello all, welcome back once again to another interesting story under the Ajadi Kamran Mahotsav story series by Mommy's Tom Musings. Today I'm going to talk about an uh, interesting place which all of us in India would have heard at least once or twice. Your, now your interest is getting piked up, isn't it? So I'm going to take you to the most holiest city in India where every Hindu wants to go visit at least once. That's none other than Kashi. We all know Kashi as a religious town or as a cultural town where most of the Hindus would want to go and pay homage to uh, the Kashi Vishwanath, isn't it? And uh, Modi ji is, is also doing a lot of uh, good things uh, to facilitate, uh, to help the pilgrims who are visiting Kashi in huge numbers uh, on a daily basis. But do you know that Kashi is also being ruled by a Hindu king? I mean, like every other town, or every other region, we need to have a king, right? And we have heard so much from about Kashi, but we, uh, did you hear any single time about the, uh, the king who has ruled Kashi? Did you ever give it a thought as to under whose empire actually Kashi, Kashi uh, city falls under? So today I'm going to talk about the very same dynasty, Narayan dynasty, uh, whose kings uh, are, are called as Kashi Naresh. So that we will be aware of how Kasi is developing day by day, progressively, both on all the fronts. So before I we go into the real uh, Narayan dynasty, we all I just want to touch a little bit about the Kasi city uh, history. We all know that Kasi is a very ancient city. It it's a city that's older than the history. It's a, his, a city that's older than the tradition. It's a city that's older than the legend. If we put all these three together, history, legend, and tradition, even then this city is much more older than this. So that means we human beings cannot even basically envisage or uh, understand how old this city is, according to Mark Twain. Some people argue that Kasi city is there 3,000 years back. Some people argue that it's there 6,000 years back. Some people say that it's there even prior to that, uh, somewhere around the Kasi city originated somewhere around 12,000 years back. So we don't know what is the exact date when the Kasi city came into existence or when the Kasi Vishwanatha temple was built, by whom, or is it a Swambu temple? We know so many people, so many kings, queens have given funds, have given lands for renovation of the temple, but the originality of the temple cannot be, I mean, basically accounted for because that's how old Kasi as a city is. So um, I don't have the stature or I don't have the knowledge from in the Hindu Sanatana Dharma that I can talk about Kasi or the miracles or the effects of Kasi, which can uh, basically entice the entire all the Hindus across the globe to Kasi. Uh, Kasi. It's a very person's dream to visit Kasi even once. So I'm just going to concentrate mainly on the history part of the Kasi. As far as we know, Kasi is one of the 16 Mahajanapadas which came into existence after the Indus Valley civilization got ended, ended up. So uh, that means Kasi city is there in existence in the, even in the 5th uh, and 6th uh, uh, common era of time. So which is like quite old, isn't it? And Kasi is just not the cultural hub or the spiritual hub only for Hindus. You name the religion, we can see, uh, see the uh, roots of that particular religion there. Buddh, uh, Kasi, uh, Gautam Buddha came to Kasi. Uh, Jainism start, uh, also has its roots in Kasi. Same is the case with Sikhism. And it's also a trading hub for all the people. Uh, I mean, Northern India um, um, friends, uh, Kasi silks, Benares silks is world famous. And the muslin cloth that gets manufactured out of Benares and its paraganas are the and uh, surrounding areas is so famous that people wanted to actually buy. You can see, and Ganges uh, has become the trading highway, uh, I mean, trading water highway, let me put it this way, right from the Calcutta, uh, the, Calcutta the current Bangladesh, uh, in the down south, till the Apnat. So that is how, I mean, Kasi is also famous for its trading, uh, yeah, trading different artifacts like uh, the ivory sculptures, the stone sculptures, the cloths, the cereals, everything. And it's also a spiritual and cultural hub <coughs> for all the religions. 
so that is why i say kahasi is the dream for almost of us to visit even once <coughs> excuse me at least once in a in their lifetime so i mean let us just take a step back and understand uh, think about it this way when a city is attracting so many pilgrimage pilgrims out from all over the world that city has to be maintained neatly who is responsible for maintaining the neatness uh, calm and serenity of the kasir uh, city um, town or city let us call it who is responsible for taking care of all the pilgrims all the these things in fact uh, i forgot to mention that kasir is also an educational hub right from ancient uh, times you do remember that there are so many universities that are there right along the timelines of nalanda and takshashila isn't it <coughs> so who is maintaining all these things so that is the question which plagued me and led me into this research and then i hit upon miss narayan dynasty or they belong to bhumi hart clan of people from the bihar region so now kasi was ruled kasi as it it's not a huge kingdom as such it's been ruled by various zamindari zamindars and it used to primarily fall in under the avad empire avad is current more or less the current uttar pradesh region right so it used to fall under avad uh, nawabs during the 17th century that is when the recorded history of uh, kasi is kings has started in the indian histories books but before that we all know about the history and mythology where both of them were getting entwined and kasi was being was falling in the kosala kingdom for some time and then janak janak maharaja's kingdom and all the stuff i'm not talking about all that because we don't have the records to prove that though we know that kasi is existing from such a long time so maharaja balwant singh is one such zamindar who was reporting to avad nawabs and he was so powerful that i mean he should always go and conquer small small other zamindaris in and around kasi and he and at one point of time he had more than 1 lakh hindu army supporting him in all his these things because the reason why he had to go on this conquest or and also build this army is that kasi being the oldest hindu city most of the hindu kings right from down south till, uh, till the utmost uh, northern part of india every hindu kids every hindu king dream to have kasi under their uh, empire so be it be maha marathas be it be um, the moguls be it be uh, the nawabs uh, from bengal everywhere people were always trying to uh, kind of come and then uh, conquer kasi and at that point of time this kasi zamindar was being handled by balwant singh and so he wanted to have a stable empire so that the pilgrims who were is coming to kasi can have a peaceful stay worship lord uh, i mean kasi vishveshwarnath and then go back home in a safe way so that is one of the reasons primary reasons for him to build his army which was actually being i mean uh, been managed by the common public in kasi city it was not any trained uh, army per se they don't have the military skills nor the artillery skills but these people just wanted to protect the um, sanctity of that particular place and that is why they joined into balwan singh's army and that is how uh, i mean balwan singh has uh, basically um, taken control of most of the paraganas in the southeast up and he has established himself as a semi independent ruler of the avad empire Balwan Singh's son, uh, Mr. Uh, Raja Chait Singh, is the person who has ruled between 1770 and uh, 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 who has started ruling from 1770. By the time he took the control of uh, Kasi Empire, uh, Nawab of Awadh was getting really troubled with all these invasions from Marathas, Mughals, uh, Sindhis, uh, then Punj, and then uh, Punjab, everywhere. And on top of it, these uh, Britishers were also trying to have a control on Kasi because the uh, one side of the Kasi, the Lucknow Regency, has been occupied. totally conquered by britishers and the same case with the mushirabad uh, regency as, as well so in between these two uh, regencies we do have a semi independent uh, zamindari which is being managed by balwant singh so britishers wanted to occupy even kasi and so that they can all club all these regencies into one single umbrella and so 
Um, basically, Nawab of Awadh got really tired of all these interferences from so many people. Uh, he got, and on top of it, Balwan Singh is also always saying, like, give me freedom, give me freedom. He was uh, like con continuously sending requests to Nawab of Awadh. So he said, let us get rid of all these uh, problems. So he wrote an agreement with Britishers saying, like, um, the entire Kasi Jamindari will be handed over to Britishers. And that's when our Warren Hastings has come into picture. And he started, uh, he wanted to use the doctrine lab uh, policy on Chait Singh, saying like, this guy, Chait Singh, is not a capable ruler of Kasi. And, the, and with that uh, tool, he wanted to upset up Kasi uh, Jamindari. But Chait Singh is not a uh, incapable ruler, my dear friends. He is a very good benevolent ruler who, who was being supported by all the uh, common people in Kasi because he is one person who doesn't collect any extravagant taxes from the farmers, from the weavers, from the sculptors, or any other profession. He should, in fact, ease their life by giving them free education. He started establishing a lot of schools in and around Kasi. Baraganas. And also he wanted, uh, he was easing their lives by reducing the taxes, by not collecting taxes. In fact, for traders, he used to say that, I mean, if people try to come and give that, uh, sell their goods, then the cost of that will be higher. But if the, for the people who want to take the finished goods out of Kasi, the tax is zero, absolutely zero. The reason is he wanted to have different kinds of factories or karkanas during that time, which will produce the finished goods. He doesn't want to uh, only give the raw material or the byproducts. He wanted his people to become self-sufficient so that they can sell the finished goods to the traders. And you, because of all these policies, people, the common people should be always love and respect chasing. And when Chai, uh, when Warren Hastings used this doctrine lapse policy and tried to I mean, uh, take away Ka Kasi Jamindari from uh, Chait Singh. Chait Singh didn't agree for it. And he was trying to put up a huge fight through negotiations and all that stuff. And then uh, one uh, fine day, Warren Hastings has cunningly uh, arranged for a meeting with Chait Singh. But instead of meeting, he has got him house arrested and confined him to the Ramnagar Palace, which is on the other side of the Ganges River. Because at that point of time, during Balwan Singh's uh, regency, they felt that the political administration and the temple administration should not be clubbed and shouldn't be on the same bank uh, side of the river Ganga because obviously there will be a lot of wars and all these uh, things that happen uh, in the fort which will pollute the atmosphere in and around the Kasi Vishwanathar temple. So <coughs> that is the reason why it is on the other side of Kasi that is in the Ramnagar. So the moment pe common people from Kasi heard that chasing got house arrested, everybody started revolting. I mean, I mean, they all got polluted and they were going on a revolt against Va Warren Hastings. And Warren Hastings obviously had some friends in the royal family as well as uh, some uh, people in the uh, um, good positions in, in uh, Kasi Jamindari who helped him. And in fact, you know what? The funny thing, he came <coughs> in a very... <clears throat> pompous way to Kasi but when he was fleeing from Kasi he had to dress like a lady and run I mean go on a horse sitting on the back of a horse rider I mean there is some song that goes in and around Kasi about how Baron Hastings had fled from Kasi but this has decreased Baron Hastings position in the British Empire so that shows how bad the situation was for him and in the meantime even before the, this revolt could happen Chait Singh has jumped from the car the Ramnagar fort uh, towards the banks of the Ganges and he escaped and he got uh, he tried getting help from other Hindu kings like Gwarya kings Marathas and all these people <coughs> so that he can fight the war with Britishers and win back Kasi Jamindari but it didn't happen unfortunately he, he had to die die when he was outside uh, Kasi itself. Then the next person who became um, the titular head for Kasi Jamindari is Maharaja Udit Narayan Singh. Udit Narayan Singh is the son of Chait Singh and he is one person, very shrewd person, I should say. He knew that how uh, cunningly Britishers had taken away uh, their Jamindari, their lands, their control over Kasi uh, uh, region. 
and in the very same way he used the corruption he used the dishonesty in the british empire and uh, he's done some dealings under the table to re- get back all the things which has lost so that is what is called shrewdness isn't it my dear friends he didn't go and fight with them uh, on the high court or i mean british court or he didn't file any petitions because he knew that all these things will not give him the result which he desires so after and he is the one person who has started ram leela in 1870s the month long ram leela festival which is being uh, organized in a very pomp and grandeur way in kashi even today it was not stopped uh, from last 200 years then you can imagine how much respect and how much the uh, diligence which kashi people actually attached to this ram leela uh, utsav and uh, during this utsav the king also comes on top of the elephant like just uh, how it was in 1870s and this ram leela utsav will be um, uh, uh, handled in a way with uh, how it started way back in 1870s without any lights with i mean with only the lantern lights no you know, flashy flashy dj lights and stuff like that no electronic devices and stuff like that there is one little anecdote which i want to mention it here during 1962 in indian war with china the pilots were going on sorties in the midnight and they were able to see i mean towards uh, evenings late evenings around 7 or 8 in the evenings they were able to see kashi uh, the lights from the kashi town i mean city high up in the sky and they informed our indian government and indian government has spoken to kashi naresh and asked uh, him, him to give an advice as to how the these lights can be controlled because it is a very big danger for the kashi people people in the kashi as the chinese can come and invade kashi because of the lights that are being seen in the, from the sky then kashi uh, maharaja udit narayan i mean basically the um, kashi narayan at that particular point of time in 1962 uh, has covered those lanterns with leaves around so that the lights can be seen only on the ground and not high up in the sky that shows how diligently these people follow the age old traditions in conducting ram leela even today my dear friends not only that uh, in uh, under prabhu narayan singh's reign and kashi has acquired the princely state uh, status uh, after a lot of negotiations and discussions with dishers and that is when uh, prabhu narayan singh was officially called as maharaja though they were not really given the maharaja title they were always called as kashi naresh by the people because they love i mean the kashi people love and their king the reason being every king is so benevolent and they should take care of all the amenities which are needed for a public common people like education health uh, taxes uh, um, and then everything so in that way these people are the real stealers of the uh, people's heart that is why even today uh, after abolishing all the royal kingdoms all a privy purses and everything Ka- though it's a title and role kashi naresh is being revered and respected as much as even today uh, prabhu narayan singh has in fact donated his uh, 1300 acres from his own personal uh, land to, uh, so that uh, madan malavya ani besen and all these n- n- noble leaders can start Uh, the banaras hindu university which is a very famous university which is belongs to one of the ivy league universities in across india right we all know how prestigious banaras hindu university is in fact uh, during his father's time they have also started sanskrit university uh, for higher education in the kashi so that they were giving most of the importance for higher education arts culture trade everything you name things they are there in fact vibhuti narayan singh the uh, last ruler of kashi from the kashi the kashi kings of the narayanan dynasty has actually established uh, kashi raja trust or now it's called kashi vishveshwar samsthan charitable trust which takes care of all the hindu books hindu rituals hindu 
palsy is everything in and it will all uh, tries to get all the age old books about the hindu ritual sanatan dharma and preserve it in the saraswati mahal which is there even today in the ramnagar fort and vibhav narayan singh still lives in ramnagar fort i mean vibhav narayan singh and his uh, heir not vibhav narayan singh obviously because he is the one who signed the accession treaty to indian government in 1947 and and they uh, uh, and it has the ram uh, ramnagar fort also has a huge museum which actually uh, displays all the antique cars swords everything whatever these kings have used along with all the important texts books and other uh, religious uh, different religious practices uh, everything that were that depict the importance of kasi even today this museum has been shattered by the advice of our late prime minister shri lal bahadur shastri as he knew the collection which each uh, these kings were holding at that point of time so he said that it's better to open a museum and let the public see so that they can understand the, what is the history of kasi at least from the recorded period of the time what a noble idea isn't it so Uh, this, uh, this is one of the family photos which uh, was taken during 1870s with all the kings <coughs> who are alive at that point of time from the narayan dynasty and the current maharaja throne is still being there in the national museum in delhi and the current heir of narayan dynasty at the current kashi naresh who is the titular king of kashi empire in sanat narayan singh he is still living in the ramnagar uh, fort and is and, and can be still seen by the public during the ramlila festival and also on a regular basis whenever he comes and goes out for other works and stuff like that so that's all my dear friends for today's story i hope you liked it because i felt a pilgrimage center like kasi needs somebody who can take care of the cleanliness who can help the pilgrims to have a safe darshan and return back to their home and everything there is lot more that goes beyond maintaining this pilgrimage center and kashi naresh is the person who is held responsible for all these things because i mean he has ensured all these things happen so seamlessly that we never really felt the need to know about kashi naresh Uh, rule or importance uh, in kashi but people of kashi still love him and that is the reason why i had chosen him for today's topic i hope you liked it thanks a lot for watching today's story let us meet tomorrow with another interesting story bye bye